Hello everyone, we're going to take a look at the Hershey and Chase experiment. There are a lot of experimental techniques here that are repeated throughout the biology syllabus of using radioisotopes to help us be able to label molecules and be able to detect where they're actually going. So I'll talk about that a little bit, uh, make sure that you understand. I'll use an analogy throughout to help you kind of understand what's going on. Um, the Hershey and Chase experiment uh, was trying to figure out what the genetic material was actually made of. So in, in terms of this, uh, the content of genes, are genes made up of DNA or are they made up of protein? So a little bit more background. They used two, I was going to say organisms, but we don't really consider a virus to be an organism because it's not living, doesn't contain cells. So they used bacteria, specifically E. coli, and they also used a virus specifically called a T2. This one is called a T2 bacteriophage. Here's a diagram of what that actually looks like. And they're going to basically have these two things interact with each other because they already know that a virus can infect bacteria. They up until this point, they already had the knowledge that viruses could transfer something to the bacteria, and that was the genetic material. But they wanted to know what the chemical basis of the genetic material was. Was it this molecule called DNA, or was it this molecule, uh, this type of molecule that was made up of a protein? So here's that radio isotope business that I was talking about a little bit earlier. So it turns out that DNA is a substance that contains phosphorus and proteins don't actually contain phosphorus. It turns out that proteins contain sulfur while DNA doesn't contain sulfur. So if they were able to make the sulfur glow somehow and make the phosphorus glow somehow, they'd be able to uh, label these particular structures so that we could see where they would end up. And obviously they would be labeled in a different way. And so the way they label it is by using a specific isotope of sulfur. So S35 is this radioactive sulfur isotope, whereas P32 is the radioactive phosphorus isotope. So I guess kind of think about it like sulfur S35 makes things glow, I don't know, gold, while phosphorus P32 makes things glow silver. And what we want to do is end up, we want to infect these bacterial cells and in the end see if the cells are glowing gold or glowing so silver. And depending on the color that they're glowing or the type of radioisotope that we're detecting, we can figure out if sulfur got into the cell or if phosphorus got into the cell. If phosphorus got into the cell, then we know that whatever got in must be made of DNA because only DNA contains phosphorus. If only sulfur got into the cell, then we know that it had to be protein that got into the cell. So that's the basic idea. We label things, different colors, and then we let them do their stuff, allow the infection to happen, and then take a look afterwards and then see what color label we end up with. And as a result of that, we can figure out if DNA or protein is the actual genetic material. So here's a diagram showing some of this. Let me just reveal some of the other things here and then I'll come and come back and explain the diagram. The colors are very nice here. Um, so we talked about viral proteins contain sulfur and no phosphorus. We said DNA contains phosphorus but no sulfur. So these are all bits of background information. And in the end, if this theoretically were to happen, let's see, if the DNA was actually glowing red, you see, and the DNA got in, then in the end, the cells would actually contain uh, DNA and be, be able to detect that. If the protein of the virus was red, and we would allow that to go in, if the cells ended up red, then we would say the protein got in. But you can see, here's a fast forward to the actual results. We know, of course, that DNA is the genetic material, but back then they didn't know if it was DNA or protein. So in the end, here are the basic results of what you would expect if you could actually see everything going on. Because we know that DNA gets into the cell, it should be the DNA that's showing glowing phosphorus and not glowing sulfur. Glowing sulfur is only found on the protein coats. Glowing DNA is actually found uh, from the actual DNA source and so it would end up in the cell and you'd be able to see something like that. So this is all fine and dandy when we can see a diagram made by a cool illustrator but the reality is is that this stuff is all super super small and tiny and we can't actually look and be able to visually see 
if there is actual glowing phosphorus or glowing sulfur or these radioisotopes. So the results ended up looking something like this, which I'll try to explain now and try to show you why this is the key right here, this 65% showing up in the pellet. So when you have all these cells and all the viruses, they're super tiny, you can't actually see all the bacteria that's on your body, right? So we have to be able to figure out some other way to quote unquote see where the actual uh, radiation is that's being given off. So a couple other words here that you might not be familiar with, but basically we allow this entire reaction to happen. So we label the DNA with radio, radioactive phosphorus and we label the sulfur, the protein with radioactive sulfur. We allow them to infect bacteria and mix it all up. In reality, it's not very exciting and it's all just happening inside a little test tube like this. Then you take the test tube after all the reactions have happened, allow the infections to happen, and you spin this thing really fast it's called centrifugation and so you put it in a centrifuge you spin it really fast all the heavy stuff sinks to the bottom and bacteria cells are heavier than the viruses and so down here at the bottom you end up getting a solid pellet which actually contains all the bacteria cells and the hope is that by shaking everything up and spinning really fast you're able to separate these protein uh, viruses these coats of the viruses off of the cells so they're probably up here so we're assuming in this pellet that this is all cells and then we use uh, some techniques and devices to actually detect where the radioactivity is coming from and it turns out when you're actually looking for phosphorus radioactivity all the phosphorus radioactivity or 65 percent of the phosphorus radioactivity showed up in this pellet which tells us that some phosphorus has gotten into these cells right here and we know that phosphorus only comes from dna that's why this is the key and this is the main part this is the conclusion that led us to understand and believe that our genes are made up of dna so here's a little box that summarizes what i just said some of you naysayers out there may be looking at this and saying hold on a minute if this is the result and we know that genes are actually made up of dna because of the 65 percent how come there's some radioactivity how come i can detect some sulfur activity in here doesn't that mean that sulfur actually got in very good conclusion and you would probably jump to the same conclusion and idea the explanation they came up with for that is that when these viruses are actually attached not all of them actually got shook off and separated like that so some of the sulfur radiation that's detected is from viruses that are still stuck to the surfaces of the actual uh, cells but when you look at the distribution of the percentages and you test for statistical significance um, most scientists, actually all scientists when they try to repeat this experiment or look at it come to the same conclusion that the genes or the genetic material is actually made up of DNA and not protein. A very clever experiment where they used some techniques, new techniques that were available to them, centrifugation and labeling things with radioactive uh, isotopes. You'll see this radiation uh, labeling all throughout different types of experiments that have been done from the Calvin experiment uh, for photosynthesis if you're doing higher level uh, all the way around to a whole bunch of other types of examples you'll find. Hershey and Chase, these two people, DNA is genetic material. They use radioisotopes of phosphorus and sulfur. They use bacteria and they use viruses and they were able to come to this conclusion here that genes are made up of DNA because DNA contain phosphorus. <laughs>